Hello, I'm Richard Groper, trumpet instructor at the University of California, Santa Cruz. And we're here today with Mario Guaneri, trumpet professor at the San Francisco Conservatory of Music. Mario has a long and distinguished career as a professional trumpet player, having performed for many years with uh, Los Angeles Philharmonic, and also as principal trumpet with the Los Angeles Chamber Orchestra. And in addition, he's performed on over 300 movie soundtracks. Lately, he's turned his attention to performing jazz around the San Francisco Bay Area. And he's also known as the uh, inventor of the buzz extension resistance piece, or the burp, and more recently, the breath awareness tool, the BAT, and we'll talk about those uh, here today. Um, now, Mario, I understand that a lot of your philosophy about how to approach the trumpet and teach the trumpet comes from your teachers, uh, William Bacchiano and James Stamp. Yes, those were two of my primary teachers, and I found them to be uh, both wonderful teachers and both different in their approaches. Um, uh, Jimmy was a, a person who dealt with more of the skills of trumpet playing. Um, and Mr. Vacchiano uh, was a uh, wonderful performer who transferred that uh, energy and spirit. Mm -hmm. And so what kind of things did you, uh, did you learn from um, James Stamp that you then transferred to your own teaching? <clears throat> I think the, the biggest influence um, from Stamp was the ability to design and uh, expand your skills as a trumpet player to be more efficient. Mm -hmm. um, he would make you uh, think about what you were doing, um, even in an indirect way, not so much a direct way all the time, but uh, the exercises that he had us perform, um, in order to do them correctly, you had to be playing correctly from a physical point of view. Uh -huh. And so what kind of things did he emphasize in order to do that? Right, so, so we would work on breathing. We had breathing exercises, many of which I've uh, ad adapted to my own use and for my own students. Uh, the inhalation expansion, the idea of filling up, uh, breathing from the back of your throat and filling up all of the areas of your body and feeling low first and high at the end of the breath and all the way around, of course, the rib cage. Uh -huh. That would be the first thing. And, and then on the exhalation, uh, one of the exercises that we did with Stamp was to uh, blow a paper back. Uh -huh. uh, and I can demonstrate that. Uh, after the inhalation, put a paper about six inches away from you. So as you see, you don't uh, try to blow the paper as hard as you can, mm -hmm. but rather you control the air and you control the, the, the distance that the paper leaves from, from the up and down position. So how, how uh, do you approach managing your breath to be able to do that? Well, my approach is to, to feel the expansion and then to maintain that expansion throughout the time that you're using the breath. Um, one of the best exercises that I also learned from Stamp was uh, the panting exercise. Mm -hmm. So after I take the breath, I move the air back and forth in and out of my body, the whole breath, the whole breath um, tube, if you will, from the bottom to the top. And that creates uh, uh, a certain amount of of expansion uh, and muscle uh, engagement in this area so that the air remains under your control. Mm -hmm. I can now talk and hold the air still in my body. I can count one, two, three, and then let it out. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, basic, I think, for, for vocalists. Mm -hmm. but not always used in the brass world. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important because it, it's what gives you control over the music. Mm -hmm. Well, as trumpet players, one of the things where our breath control becomes most evident is when we crescendo and decrescendo on, on, on a note. <clears throat> exactly. And, and I think that's another exercise that you can do. You can do it, we're, you're basically doing the same thing when you're blowing the paper away, but you can sing, which I will attempt to do. Uh, uh, uh. So 
as I go louder and softer, I can feel the, the different, um, uh, different amount of muscle engagement mm -hmm. in this area. Um, now, if, if you have no sense of, of support or expansion or engagement, uh, your air will not be available for you to use. Mm -hmm. And when you get to the instrument, um, you're going to have problems with that. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm a big proponent of developing skills away from the instrument. That's why I created the burp, which is a, uh, another tool to, to hear what the Amish in air is doing, and the breath awareness tool, which is a, a substitute basically for your hands. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it allows you to feel the expansion by putting these two straps around, which have elastic in them. And it allows you to hold the instrument at the same time. Mm -hmm. So as I pick up the instrument and take a breath, without my hands there, I can feel the expansion. And then I can play and not be concerned about managing my breath because I can feel that the belt is holding things in the right place. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I want to develop positive muscle memory mm -hmm. so that when I take the belt back off, then I still have that same muscle memory and it becomes a default for when I'm performing. Mm -hmm. So some exercises then uh, that you use to practice this, you could use your, uh, the paper exercise that you use to blow back, right. um, the panting exercise, the uh, expansion and counting or singing doing some crescendos and decrescendos. So you advocate doing these exercises away from the trumpet before trying to apply them to right. the trumpet. I would, I would say do them all before you start to play the trumpet, maybe even before you take the trumpet out of the case so that you're really focused on it. Uh -huh. and, and those things uh, then will transfer uh, if you use the other tools that, that, that are available to remind you when you play. Because mm -hmm. when we pick up the instrument, we get, of course, uh, result oriented in, into the music, which we should be. But as great athletes do, you make the skills your default. You make the skills happen uh, automatically so that the music can then be built on top of this great foundation. For many people, the easiest way to experience a correct breath with correct support is to lie on the floor and put a book on your stomach. Observe how the book rises as they take a breath and how it maintains the same position when I perform. So we've talked about the resistance that comes into play when we're singing. How about when we're playing trumpet? What do we need to be aware of? The first point of resistance when you're playing a brass instrument or playing trumpet uh, is the, are the lips coming together. And so uh, another skill that I like to develop for myself and my students is the ability to, to just buzz the lips without the mouthpiece. And the Stamp did this also. Mm -hmm. And so any of the exercises, again, that you create for yourselves or whatever works for you to realize that that is uh, the basis for your embouchure. Mm -hmm. So I like to bring the lips together as, again, in the hup position, and then buzz the lips. And notice the feeling that all of a sudden the air is not totally free to go out at the same rate as it did before. Mm -hmm. Now, the important thing to, to add, and here again is where the the, the bat, the breath awareness tool comes into play, is to feel um, your expansion and the fact that you can't let all the air out at one time, mm -hmm. that some of the air has to remain in your body as you're buzzing. Mm -hmm. And then you add to the buzz, for instance, going up, mm -hmm. and you can feel the different the different amount of air speed or air pressure that you have to add to that. So you feel as you ascend, you uh, add more air pressure by regulating from lowering your body. Exactly. Just as you do when you're singing and singing louder or singing higher, things change. Mm -hmm. And then when you add that to the trumpet, 
Um, this is what I assume Stamp was talking about, where you make your seal before you add the mouthpiece pressure. Absolutely. Very important point, and that any pressure that you add to the embouchure is done after you've sealed mm -hmm. and after you've done the hup okay. breath and put your lips together. Okay, can you demonstrate that? Sure. Good. And so on, in actual practice, um, without slowing it down, what would it look like if, if you were actually just going to play a note? Oh, so without slowing it down mm -hmm. and putting the mouthpiece back in the horn, panting, releasing. So all of that playing was, again, built on top of that foundation of the air support and the way that I set up. 